Eric Holt Jimenez has worked for more than 20 years with the Campesino, uh, Campesino movement in Latin America. And he directs Food First and the Institute for Food and Development Policy in Oakland, California. Well, it, it's really been a privilege um, to be here at this conference and to be having been a part of the organizing. Um, I don't want to overstate the case, but in many ways, I think this conference has been historic. Um, earlier this year at the Via Campesina conference in Jakarta, um, those of us who were not farmers, you know, academics and, and uh, some NGO people, were invited to, to attend as allies and to share our opinions. But we were reminded that this was not a civil society conference. Uh, the meeting in Jakarta was a farmer's political meeting. Um, and when June Boris invited Food First to join in planning uh, food sovereignty, a critical dialogue, he reminded me that this conference, being held at Yale, uh, was an academic conference. <laughs> and that, yes, activists, farmers, and NGO people are, were all invited to share their knowledge and perspectives in a dialogue in which academics were asking the question, does the subject of food sovereignty have an intellectual future in critical agrarian studies? And if so, on what terms? Well, as we've all seen, food sovereignty means different things to different people. But I think what brings it to the attention of critical agrarian studies is the fact that food sovereignty is a broad, diverse, agrarian-based movement counter-movement to transform present-day practices and relations in the global food system. So the task for all social movements, and food sovereignty is no exception, is how to build enough social power to create political will. And uh, I'll quote, go back to Samir Amin, who says that the challenge to building this social power today is twofold. First, finding convergence and diversity amongst the myriad of new social movements that have filled the void left by the old social movements whose revolutionary movement has passed. And two, the repolitization of these new movements who find the old forms of movement politics to be ineffective because despite the significant social gains these movements brought to the world, let's face it, capitalism rather ruthlessly has moved on. So we're not in a revolutionary moment yet. For now, we're in what I'd call a transitional moment of multiple Gramscian crises in which the new is trying to be born and the old refuses to die. For me, then, one of the questions that food sovereignty and our dialogue here brings up is if the proletariat was once theorized as the revolutionary subject during the emergence of industrial capitalism, is the modern peasantry, however we choose to understand the term, the subject for a transitional moment now that moves us from a period of multiple crises towards radical structural transformation? And can studies of food sovereignty reveal the paths, means, and terms of convergence and diversity and help us understand the forms of repolitization of the social movements. So to return to our conference's question, does the subject of food sovereignty have any intellectual future in critical agrarian studies, and if so, on what terms? I think we might consider turning the question around. Do critical agrarian studies have an intellectual future in the movement for food sovereignty? <laughs> And if so, on what terms? <laughs> and I think that despite some intellectual kicking and screaming, agrarian studies already has a presence in the food sovereignty movement. And unless we want to, it to morph into the episteme of agro-industrial studies, it must seek <laughs> an intellectual future in food sovereignty. I'd like to think of this conference as a moment of dialogue, perhaps uh, via campesina style, dialogue of Dialogo de Saberes that will help us constructively determine the terms of this activist intellectual engagement. Thank you all very much. <laughs>